Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Happy New Year, everybody. It is January 2022. This is actually the month I was born in. It's actually the month this truck was born in. The build sheet says that it was manufactured in January 2021. So we're almost at a year. I've got about 10,000 kilometers on the odometer and we experienced our first issue, which is what today's video is going to be about. Now, if you haven't watched this channel before, I have a number of projects. One of the more dominant ones is this uh, GMC Sierra AT4. Lots of mods, little things that I do here and there on it. Uh, but many of you may be curious uh, to learn what the issue is that I had. So let's go for a little drive and we'll talk about it. Now, for those of you that are new here, I am driving a 2021 GMC Sierra. It has a few mods that are relevant to today's video, which is a cold air intake and an aftermarket Borla exhaust. It's a catback exhaust, not straight pipe or anything. And I did not delete the catalytic converters. Now, I do drive most of the time in L9. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there is a link above for the video talking about a free way to disable your dynamic fuel management by shifting your transmission into L9 or one gear lower than what the maximum is. Anyway, that's a separate video. So last week during some of the holiday break, I started my truck remotely. I was parked outside, let it warm up a bit, get in. And I noticed when I woke the truck up by pushing the start button that the tire pressure sensors were reading low, at least in one wheel. And that's common when it gets this cold, you know, like minus 40, minus 50 with the wind chills. When it gets this cold here, the air contracts in the tires maybe a little more than it would in the not quite as cold climates. And then you get a, a readout like that or an air with your tire pressure. Once you start driving, it usually comes up a little bit. Um, but in this case, it did come up a little bit, but it was a little lower than normal, but that's fine. We have a lot of ice and snow on the road, a little extra traction with uh, lower tires never hurt anybody. So I just left it as is, and what about my business? And like any red-blooded truck owner would do, I headed to the hardware store to check some things out. I go inside after I park the truck, everything's fine. I go to pay for some items and I remote start from the checkout. Come outside, the truck's running, which it should be. I get in and I notice that the idle is a little off. It's, it's a little bit rough. It's not horrid, but it's, it's a little bit rough. Something's not right. So I wake up the truck by pushing the start button and sure enough, lots of the uh, indicators light up, lights up like a Christmas tree. I mean, that's standard when you start the vehicle, but this was followed by prompts that were saying what was wrong from service ESC, service parking brake, and steering assist reduced drive with care because my truck talks to me nice like that. And uh, I'm like, okay, something's wrong. Check engine lights on, not good. So I did what you usually do and I just shut it off gave it a second, started again, rough idle, same things, all the prompts were coming back. I'm like, okay, something's not right. Shut it off again. This time I let it sit longer, opened the door, closed the door, just made sure everything kind of shut down and then uh, restarted it and it started fine. Except now I had a check engine light. So I just let it sit there for a little bit, just kind of, you know, listen to things, monitor, rev the engine a little bit. Everything seemed fine, except that check engine light was still on. So since I wasn't in limp mode or anything like that and everything seemed to be fine except the check engine light was on, I decided to go to my next stop. So I get to my next stop, go inside, uh, come back out, go to remote start, doesn't work. And I realized why, because the check engine light's on. As a safety precaution, you usually can't start your vehicle remotely if there is something not operating properly. Makes sense because they wouldn't want you to do any damage inadvertently by forcing it to start. So I couldn't remote start it. Now again, keep in mind, this is important, that it is super frigid temperatures here. Like you get frostbite within 10 minutes if you're not properly covered up outside. So I needed to have my remote start. So I decided it was probably time to go home, run a scan and see what that scan yielded. Now by the time I got home, OnStar decided to send me an email notification to also let me know that they were concerned that my truck had a malfunction and I should go get it serviced immediately. 
while this is the holiday break, there was nowhere I was gonna be able to go to get it serviced immediately. Okay, so we run the scan and we get two codes. We get P0307, which is cylinder seven misfire. It's a pretty common one, I guess, in previous generation uh, GMC and Chevy trucks and possibly cars. And I also get P050D, which is a cold start rough idle error. So of course I'm curious, much like you guys are, I'm gonna start looking into what these are. But before that, I already know that I've got over a week still of terrible, terrible cold temperatures. I'm gonna to need to be able to use remote start and I need to clear this engine code if I'm gonna be able to do that. So I clear the codes and it still says they're sitting in the permanent memory so we can you know, still have them there later, but at least my check engine light um, should go out and stay out, which so far it has since filming this video. So let's talk about these codes. So the first code, P0307 with the misfire, probable most frequent causes are bad spark plug, bad plug wire, or bad coil pack. Usually in that order, it's most common to be the spark plug, maybe the wire, and then lastly, less common, the coil pack. So being that this truck is only 11 months old, I highly doubt that it's any of those three items I just mentioned, but it could even result from a vacuum leak, low compression, like maybe a gasket or something. It could even be a bent uh, valve. So is this the beginning of the lifter issue that you hear about so often? I sure hope not, everything sounds okay, but of course that uh, you know really got me thinking. So on to the second code, the P050D, Cold Star Rough Idle. Once I dug into this one, I started realizing that each issue on their own can actually contribute to the other. So it's almost like the chicken and the egg argument, you know, which came first. I don't know if it's the misfire that made the Cold Star Rough Idle happen, or if the Cold Star Rough Idle made the misfire happen, because it seems to be both can contribute to each other. And that's fine. But when it comes to a cold start rough idle code, some of the research I did uh, makes sense on why it would happen. Keep in mind again, it's super cold here, right? That was a key to this story. So some of the ways a cold start rough idle code could be thrown would be unregulated air with the wrong fuel mixture. That could do it. That could be in part because the engine coolant temperature sensor is giving the wrong value. It could be your idle air control is giving the wrong value. It could be a number of things, who's to say for sure. But I'm inclined to think that this severe cold is what contributed to this because this is the first time that it's happened and it's only happened during extremely cold weather. All right, so we will be taking the truck in for service eventually. Right now, everything's working fine and I need to be able to remote start for the next couple months because it's gonna be super cold. If it does throw a code again right away, then I will treat it very seriously and I'll, I'll make the first appointment that I can. You got my commitment on that. But if you have some predictions as to what did go wrong exactly, uh, leave it in the comments below. And if you're the funny guy who says, well, you shouldn't have a GMC and that would fix the problem, ha ha ha, I get it. Um, but honestly, I've owned and currently own a Ford. I have a BMW, I've had import trucks, I've had Dodges, we had an Expedition, we've had two F-150, like we've had a lot of different vehicles all of them had something at some point go wrong with them so it is what it is uh, each have their strengths and weaknesses i absolutely love this truck you can't convince me otherwise uh, at least at this point in time but uh, please do share your comments below but if they're ridiculous i'll probably just ignore them uh, no offense but uh, another exciting thing though this channel is now probably by the time you're watching this video at 10,000 subscribers for a pretty new channel i'm i'm fairly proud of that for this being my my part-time hobby so thanks for the support i really really appreciate it and uh, if you like today's video hit that like button please consider subscribing we'll talk to you next time